Well, I started out carpet cleaning for 23 years, and I, carpet cleaning went down in 2008. So I went to teaching in a prison, teaching carpet cleaning and uh, janitorial. And in 2010, the the prison had a big layoff, so I lost my job there. And while I was getting unemployment, unemployment paid for me to to go to truck driving school and and get a CDL. So I decided to to give it a try out in the oil field. So I I made a big change when I got laid off. I was in Texas, and I I moved from from Austin, Texas area to North Idaho. And then I went to school in Spokane, Washington. And um, got my CDL, it took five weeks to get the CDL. And it was about $4,000 to do that. And then once I got the CDL, then I, <laughs> I actually, I was preparing to come to North Dakota to work. And I got a wrong phone call. Someone called me from Southern Idaho and had heard that I was a really good truck driver and they wanted to hire me, but it was a wrong number. And they didn't discover that until after they hired me. So, <laughs> so I, I got hired on and I was wondering how they knew how great of a truck driver I was when I had four hours of truck driving experience. But regardless, it got me on and I, I came to Williston and went to work for a company out there and, and uh, that company only lasted about a year and then they they went under the uh, the truck driving company they had four Peterbilts so I started driving and it was in I was in uh, September of 2011 that I, I started driving in Williston and that was kind of the Wild West days where uh, so I would uh, we'd sit and sit and sit and there'd be no work for five days and then when the call would come, then we would be running nonstop around the clock. And we'd run and run and run until we couldn't run anymore. And that was kind of crazy to get started with that. Uh, going to truck driving school, uh, you know, they didn't do any of that. And it came out to Williston and that was a whole different ball game. It was like the Wild West. So, so I'd run, run, and run, and run. And it's kind of a test of your endurance to see how long you can go. So longest I ran was five days straight one hour sleep that was nuts so after doing that I said okay I've proved myself I don't I'm not ever gonna do that again but it, so I worked for them for three and a half years and I uh, did just about everything with the water truck I was driving a, a vac truck hauling water so I would be hauling fresh water in for the fracks when I first started the fracks were all running beside the big, huge swimming pool of Poseidon tank, so we'd haul water in for that. So on a, a frack, they they take a frack means fracturing, where they're taking and, and fracturing the shell that's down underneath the ground. So they drill a hole straight down and then turn and go horizontal across, and you've got all this this rock that the shell rock that has the oil in it and the, uh, there's very small amount of oil that could come out of the rock when it, as it is so on a frack they go down in there and they they hydraulically fracture it where they pump water down 10,000 pounds of pressure crack open the rock and then they set a plug and then they do the next stage and they set a pressure up fracture the rock set another plug and just keep on going until they get all their plugs set so that requires a lot of water so we were hauling water in from water depots and the water depots they would have all these pipelines run into a place to um, to get your water from and generally the water was coming from the river or a lake or sometimes it came from a pond and there was some ponds that they had but we would haul that water in and it, it would Sometimes we run for five or six days with a lot of trucks. I and mean, I'm talking a lot of trucks. I don't even know how many trucks there were. And there would be weights on, on locations. I've seen 
where we had trucks stacked back to back um, a mile or, or more long on a lease road going into a location and they're just the lease road is is just a little bit wider than one truck and you're getting two trucks you got a, a truck sitting there and then you've got a truck coming out and I've actually seen trucks that uh, somebody was afraid of hitting a mirror so they they went about a foot over feather and they rolled the truck barrel rolled the truck off the embankment Nobody got hurt, but it sure did hurt a truck. So that was the early days. Now they make the roads wider, so it's not as uh, not as bad on that. Water truck driving is uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do with a water truck. You can haul fresh water, you can haul uh, dirty water, production water, uh, flowback water. Uh, there's all kinds of different water that you you can haul with the uh, with the same truck. Now, uh, fresh water there is the least, uh, it takes the least amount of skill to do it because if you make a spill, it's not as big of a deal. It's fresh water hitting the ground. If you feel, if you spill something that has oil or salt water in it, on the other hand, that's a, a whole different ball game. So a lot of guys will start out hauling fresh water and uh, there's companies that, that they do a lot of fresh water hauling and it, it's a, it's a good entry-level thing. You get used to how the truck works, and after two or three months of of running on fresh water, then you can switch over and you can start working in doing service work and production work. And it, it depends on what you like to do. If uh, like fresh water, it's sporadic. It it comes and goes as the demand goes up and down. Production water is steady because the well is is continually producing water. Well, some guys get bored, like me. I get bored just doing the exact same thing over and over and over and over again. And some guys thrive on that. That's what they love. They like that steadiness. I kind of like a variety. So, but you can get started doing the the fresh water, and then and the pay. Uh, you, you can start out. I've seen guys start as high as. 24 bucks an hour, some 20 bucks an hour. Uh, nowadays, a lot of it is is by the barrel, or you get a percentage. So, uh, depending on how much the truck makes, uh, you get a, a percentage of that. So, as far as the percentage rate goes, generally you'll make, uh, as a driver just starting out, you'll make anywhere from 20% of what the ticket is up to. 30% of the ticket. 30% is fairly rare. And then there's a numbers game there too. So uh, so when I say a percentage, so the trucks I've seen as low as $90 an hour for the, that the truck gets and as high as $145 an hour, although I haven't seen $145 an hour in, in, a, in a long time. I do see $130 an hour. So you're working and you get, say if you get of 20% of $90 an hour, that's $18 an hour. If you get 20% of, of $130 an hour, that's $26 an hour. So, and then some companies, what they do is they get, they give you a percentage of what the truck gets, not what the oil company pays. So uh, you, you have to be careful on that because say uh, if you get 30% uh, Say a company says they're paying you 30%, which is is the top pay, and, and it's kind of rare nowadays to get 30% of a, of a hole. Well, perhaps it's not 30% of the, uh, of what the truck, or of what the company pays, the oil company pays, rather it's 30% of what the truck pays, which is actually 25.5%, which is still good money. Uh, your top money here generally is no more than 27. So that's a, a something that you have to to consider whenever you're getting started. Of course, if you're getting started, your main thing is you need experience. It's, you'll make decent enough money. It's uh, nobody that comes out here goes broke. You can make money in this oil field. So uh, the biggest thing is you need to get the experience in. And uh, once somebody has been here for six months to nine months it's like they're old hands 
because there's <laughs> the way you work out here. And that sounds kind of crazy. And in some industries, you got to work five years before you're an old hand. But out here, you don't have to have that as much of experience. All right, guys, I got to go get a load. So you can come with me and and see what hauling water is all about. So every morning we kick the tires and light the fires. First thing I do is go around and I hit all the tires, make sure I don't have any flats, and then check the oil, uh, wipe the stick, make sure that I'm I'm in the good. I unlock a car, so a car from there to there is one quart. Well, on a big truck from there to there is one gallon. So we add oil to it if need be. And then we check the fire steering fluid is here. And this is where we put in the oil. This is the Cummins ISX engine. And then on the other side, uh, we've got the filler cap that we, we check the um, radiator fluid level. And then also on the other side, we have the windshield washer fluid, which here in the oil field, you use a lot of windshield washer fluid because its roads are dusty and, and muddy. So here on this side, we have the, the radiator tank. This, this right here is a radiator tank. It's got a, a sight glass in here. And you can see that it's low right now. Um, you're supposed to have liquid inside of there. The cap is on top. You open it up, pour in your, your fluid there. And then you check the tension on your belts, make sure it's not real loose. If it's real loose, then you either got a bad belt or you got a bad tensioner. And then you've got an alternator here and you've got a, a air conditioner compressor there. And then right here is our windshield washer fluid. So you can, our windshield washer fluid is right about there right now. So it's getting down there. So it'll hold about a, a gallon from right there. And then also you check the condition of your hoses for your turbo and the condition of your, your brake line hoses. Make sure that everything looks good. Look for any checks or cracks or anything like that. One thing I always check every morning, I shine a light underneath the engine and see if there's any drips. If there's any drips, then that's something that's new. So I'm checking it out. Now some, some trucks, they have drips, but Mine doesn't, so I'm I'm checking and see, make sure there's nothing new. Now, one morning I uh, I came out and there was a, a puddle of a radiator fluid, so that told me, oh, I need to check to see what's going on with that. It was just a little leak. Okay, as we're continuing along on our inspection, uh, we're looking to make sure there's no leaks. You listen with with the ears, and you hear that hissing noise, and run it down to see what's going on. Um, so. It, you're looking for any cracks or anything on your hoses um, checking your tires of course make sure you don't have if I have big rocks in there I'll pick the rocks out because I don't want to sling it and hit somebody this right here is your your slide for the for the uh, fifth wheel so sometimes it'll get snagged and, and get a cut in there big thing is this is your hydraulic hoses and your hydraulic hoses will get hung up and they can drop down to the, the tire. Uh, same thing with your airline, so make sure that they're all in, in good shape. I wanted to I'll point out this wet kit here. This wet kit is different than perhaps what you'd see on a farm truck. This is a very heavy duty setup. So, so here in the here in the oil field, you run the pump a lot. I mean sometimes you might run that pump for 10 15 hours straight non-stop so that overwhelms the typical hydraulics of a, uh, a normal little wet kit a lot of times a farmer he's running a little conveyor for a few minutes or just a cylinder for a few minutes and then i have just a little small cooler mounted up here well as you can see this is covered in mud and we're not even in mud season yet but that little cooler will just get coated and then it overheats and then you've got an expensive repair now, it costs about five thousand dollars to put a a wet kit on and this is the simplest setup where you it's just a big tank and it, just the volume of liquid keeps it cool so you got a I don't remember exactly how much this holds but it holds a lot so you, you 
fill that up with, with fluid and then you can run all day, no problem. Also, when you mount this thing, uh, this one, uh, it was it was mounted, uh, it was mounted right here. And when I would make a sharp turn, it would hit. Somebody didn't know what they were doing when they put this wet kit on. So we just redid it and slid it forward. And now you can see there's plenty of space here for spinning that trailer around. And we also have, a, I like to double hang the hoses. So you've got a, it hung from this side, you've got it hung from the trailer side. So it's got room to pivot. So you can, you can swivel that thing around with no problem and no fear of hanging up on anything. Yeah, I was talking before about experience and pay. Uh, one thing uh, that everybody has a question on is housing. So where do you stay? How do you get housing? So out here in North Dakota, most places will provide housing. Um, not everybody does, but that is very, very important to have housing. So if I was a single guy coming out here, I'm not bringing my family out, then I want a truck with a sleeper and I'll sleep in the truck. I'll make more money that way. So that's, uh, and I did that for three and a half years. I, I slept in the truck. <clears throat> so you would just run and then whenever you get to the end of your day, you just shut down right there. And then when you wake up, you're right there on the job. You just keep right on rolling. Um, so then if you don't have, um, say if, if you do have housing, say you've brought your wife out or or you've got family with you, then there's several different types of housing. You have uh, FEMA trailers, which is what I currently live in. And it's a 12 by 34 two bedroom FEMA trailer and it's $600 a month and it's paid for by my employer. So that doesn't cost me anything. And then you've got, um, uh, they have the company that I work for has a, uh, like an efficiency apartment which is just a uh, one big room. You've got a kitchenette, you've got a bathroom, and you've got a bed, you can put a couch in there. And usually they're all furnished and it's $400 a month. And it, sometimes you have to pay that, sometimes the company will pay it, depends on, on who you're working for. Um, and then there's the, the man camp style where you just got a bunk. And you gotta watch it on those. Some of those can be pretty bad raw sewage running around and so you got to be very very careful if you're going to get into that situation i would much rather stay in a truck than to, than to stay into that my, my personal some guys no problem they just adapt to it but not for me so um and then as far as the truck driving so one thing that i do not like is day cabs because out here things are are unpredictable there's even if you're on something that you work 12 on 12 off it almost never is 12 on 12 off you'll be hooked up and you're sucking on something and then it reaches the end of your shift and yet you've still got to keep on going because you can't di disconnect and cost the company five thousand dollars an hour while they bring out another truck it's going to take three hours to get there so in that case you want a place to uh, to either lay down or at least stretch out a little bit so like um, on a uh, a day cab I'm a big guy I, I don't have any room to wiggle I don't even have room for carrying my food and stuff and then if I got to lay down and take a nap there's no place to take a nap you've got a division in between the seats and I've done that before and that is very very miserable so if I'm working a day shift job where I'm not just running all hours of the day and night, but I'm on a regular shift, then I want at least a truck that's got a uh, the little coffin sleeper. It's got the little small sleeper, just enough room to crawl into and, and stretch out if you need to, if you get caught. I mean, another thing out here is you have blizzards and sometimes you, you get caught in a blizzard and, and there you sit for however long until the roads clear out. And if you got a, a place to stretch out, life is a whole lot better than, than if you're in a day cab. Um, of course, if you're in a, if you're living in the truck, you don't want a, a, a coffin sleeper. You want a full size sleeper, and you want a, a fridge and a microwave. Now, a lot of the companies don't provide a fridge and a microwave. You can buy the, the little Coleman coolers and stick those in there. And then um, I use lunchbox cookers whenever I was living in the truck. So I'd take a, 
uh, lunchbox cooker and I had these little pans I'd put in there and he just plugs into the cigarette lighter and I would take and I'd put uh, one cup of soup, one cup of rice and half a cup of water instead of one cup of water because you already got water in the soup. And I close it up and uh, an hour or two later I've got a hot meal and, and I'm not having to stop to and losing money to eat. So little things like that, carry sandwich meat and stuff like that so you're prepared all the time. Or for me, Dr. Peppers. Also, I want to tell you guys about my YouTube channel, uh, Scrappy Acres Farm. So I, uh, I live off grid in, in North Idaho. And uh, so I've got some things on there. I've got a uh, how I brought in internet where they said their internet was impossible to get. So I made a, a internet bridge of solar powered. And then I've got a shop that uh, that I built for 300 bucks, a 16 by 16 shop that I've got details on. So let's go over and check it out. Well, guys, so that's it for me. Well, uh, hope you found this information useful. And don't be afraid to try it. It's, this is something that you can really dig yourself out of the hole. When I first came out here, there was everybody was losing their houses, losing their cars. You name it, they were in bad shape when they came out here. I remember one guy came out and it, he had just enough money to get here and he lost his job before he even got here. They hired somebody else. And he stayed on a, on the sidewalk in a pup tent and a blizzard hit his first day. But he made it and then a year later he'd made $100,000 and he'd, he'd paid everything back up and he brought himself out. So don't be afraid to step out there and, and give it a try. You just gotta come out and see.